We've all heard about the Inflation Reduction Act, which is basically just deciding to bolster up the IRS's ability to squeeze more pennies out of Americans in an attempt to balance the budget of the federal government and reduce inflation by sucking more money out of the economy instead of just curtailing their own spending, which they would never do. But in this video, we are going to talk about two major things that you want to watch out for in terms of taxes because this might actually impact you especially if you have a small business or a side hustle ready let's dive in Today's sponsor is Moomoo. If you haven't heard of Moomoo, they are my new favorite app for advanced investors and traders. So who are they? Well, number one, Moomoo is a NASDAQ listed company. They are founded in 2018. They're basically a fintech company and they have now more than 18 million users from all around the world. Their market cap is just about $7 billion. And the reason why they've been able to grow so quickly and attract so many users from all around the world is because of the free access to some of these advanced tools that many other platforms will not give to you. And that honestly is the reason why I like Moomoo. They're democratizing access to these professional level trading tools, making them available to individual investors. One of my favorite tools that they give you access to is level two data. You can see I've got it pulled up right here. Level two data gives you access to see the market depth. And so you can see this green side on the left and the red side on the right. Those are all of the outstanding open limit orders there. So you can see this is especially useful on a security that is low volume. You don't want to just go throw in a market order and hope for the best, hope it doesn't move the market. With level two data, you can see where open orders are sitting so that you know where to place your orders so that you don't move the market. How many shares to buy or sell depending on what the liquidity is at that moment. You can see it right away here with this level two data. You can see that market depth, absolutely essential tools. And my other favorite tool that they have is the ability to track institutional portfolios. If you see here under markets, you go to institutional tracking, you can see some of the large institutions that they track like Berkshire Hathaway, Soros, you can even go into Bridgewater. So let's go there. And you can see right here that they list the top buys right now. It's Med Tronic, Berkshire Hathaway, Caterpillar. You can even see their top holdings lists. And when you scroll over, you can see how large that position is in their overall portfolio. Absolutely powerful tools here again that they're making available to individual investors. You can follow the big money, copy the big boys and just ride that wave. So I like Moomoo. And if you use my link in the description below to sign up, you can get five free stocks worth up to twenty five hundred dollars per share. Sign up for Moomoo using the link below today. So the Inflation Reduction Act was passed and one of the things that it did was it extended pass through tax break limits for two more years. These pass through tax breaks would let somebody who's running a business and that business has a loss to count those losses against other sources of income. Now, as of right now, those limitations were set to expire in the year 2027. So technically speaking for right now, you don't have to worry. These are not new changes because everything in existence right now regarding these pass through losses will stay the same. The only difference the, or the only disappointment that you might be looking at here is that if you're expecting to start to get those pass throughs again in 27, that restriction has been extended another two years. So now at this point, as long as things don't change, they will not expire until 2029, meaning that you won't get those tax breaks until later now that this bill has passed. Now, admittedly, that won't apply to most people, but this next one applies to more people than probably realize it. 
A few months ago, back in February or April this year, we were talking about something that the federal government was changing about the reporting requirements for services like Square and Venmo and PayPal. And everybody started saying, hey, you might need to keep track of your payments, your transactions, because the IRS is now asking for a report anytime there's revenue of more than $600 per year. Now, there was a lot of misunderstanding going around about this change because, number one, there is no change in the legality here or what was taxable. It's always been the case that if you earn $600 or more, or in a year from any given activity that is treated as taxable income. The difference is, well, what if you just don't report it and don't tell the IRS, how are they gonna know? Well, nowadays, especially since 2020, more and more people are doing side hustles. They're doing garage sale flipping. They're selling things that they're posting on Instagram and TikTok, and they're getting paid through the Cash App. They're getting paid through Venmo. They're getting paid through Zelle or through PayPal. And so they're using these services to be their payment processor for a business and they're making well over $600 in a year from it. Many people, especially young people are doing this full time and potentially didn't even realize that this counts as taxable income because for the majority of people, you go to your job, you work, you get your paycheck, you have no idea how much comes out and goes to the federal government as if interest-free loan then comes back to you at tax time when you do your taxes. Most people have no idea about that. So it's not a stretch to imagine that that the average 19 or 20 or 21 year old who is doing garage sale flipping and buying shoes and selling them and going to thrift shops and then reselling things on social media and getting paid through PayPal would, would not know that they have to keep some of that to pay taxes. Now, prior to this reporting rule that was talked about back in February of this year, things like PayPal and Square, they didn't report things like this. But the new requirement from the IRS at the beginning of this year was that they would have to start reporting any time $600 or more in these transactions took place. Now again, this is just a report. So the IRS would now start getting a lot of reports saying, hey, this PayPal account got $10,000 this year. This PayPal account got $15,000 this year. And they just collect these reports. But in terms of enforcing how much the person is supposed to pay on that 10,000 or 20,000 or whatever the amount is, they didn't have the manpower to do so. And that I think is the main reasoning behind the 87,000 new IRS agents and who they're gonna target for audits. And you might think, why in the world would they need so many just to accomplish this? They probably don't. They're gonna target a lot more people than that. And despite the IRS commissioner saying that they will not increase scrutiny on small businesses or middle-income Americans, you know that's exactly who they're gonna be coming after for the majority of these. We also have to recognize that the total labor force participation rate still has not gotten back to pre-2020 levels. If we take a look at this chart, we can see that it is nowhere near there, which means there are still a lot of people who left the labor force officially and never came back in. Where are all of these people getting their income from? Well, if you spend any amount of time on social media, you might be aware that there is a big movement towards small businesses, side hustles, flipping, doing things on the side that are not official real jobs. These would not be counted in the labor force participation rate, yet these people are making real incomes despite the fact they're not counted. It. And so the very fact that we are seeing this series of events happening where we have new reporting rules for payment processors and then a giant increase in hiring, I mean, 87,000, Google has like maybe double that of their employees. So the IRS is getting a massive, huge increase in their total number of employees here. They're going to be coming after people, whether you know it or not, if you owe money to the government, they're going to be coming after you. So the big warning here is 
no matter what, do not avoid paying your taxes if you owe them legally. Now, there are plenty of ways. I'm not a fan of paying taxes because there are plenty of ways that the government gives us to not pay taxes. They've given us a rule book. It's called the Internal Revenue Code. And that entire thing is all the different ways that you can use to pay less in taxes. That's what the Internal Revenue Code is. It's all of the different deductions and all the different credits. Learn it, read it, study it, take advantage of it. Those are the legal ways to pay less in taxes. Whatever you do, it is just not worth it to not pay your taxes illegally, to just avoid paying taxes. If you've got income, pay the taxes on it or study the rules of the game and learn the ways that you can use your money to get around paying taxes where the IRS won't imprison you for the rest of your life. It's just not worth it. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.